How do I sound? Uh, pretty good. good. Yeah, you sound good. Okay, here we go. That are claiming that gases are not are not affected by a downward acceleration. Um, while it is true that gas molecules, when you equalize from one tank to another and you initially get that rush of gas molecules from a stored container into a vacuum, they will continue to bounce around and bounce and bounce and bounce all over the place. Eventually, the so Bob's bought into the bouncy ball theory of gas molecules. Now, it's already been demonstrated that you take the pressure adjacent to a vacuum tank basically and you remove the barrier then it equalizes instantly the the bromine gas rushes in to the vo um the pressureless tank and the only thing that changes is entropy there's no no energy transfer there's no temperature no nothing okay but according to bob i guess uh that it, they just keep bouncing and bouncing you know and eventually there is a change in in uh energy okay not initially when it, everything rushes in but eventually it does change come on man even sometimes in the same place right so, so bob does that at the risk of sounding stupid um and i'm feeling pretty stupid at the moment but do, does when you say everything goes down do, do you mean gases as well in in this inside this device even gases will yes because if the gas if you have helium and helium is the the, the least dense gas we know right mm -hmm. but even helium has to be if it's going to rise it has to float up on something right, right? well if there's nothing to float up on then what's it going to do it's going to sit on the bottom sit on the bottom. so helium is going to sit on the bottom is that what i'm hearing helium is going to collect at the bottom of a vacuum chamber. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Another parlor trick. Okay, allow me to demonstrate. Okay, helium balloons in a vacuum chamber. Three, two, one. <laughs> right before they pop oh that one fell <laughs> see stop floating there we go yeah I, I was completely wrong the helium does go down in a vacuum chamber or does it okay the helium's lifting capacity has appeared to go down but look at the helium it is blowing every direction the balloon is not sagging toward the bottom i repeat the helium is not sagging at the bottom. It will never go down to the bottom of a vacuum chamber. That is fucking retarded. The helium will blow in every direction. That balloon will expand. It's not pooling at the bottom. I understand they think that in their brains, but look at the balloon. The balloon is expanding in every direction just because the balloon went down. The helium did not. Oh, Bob, thank it goodness you're here. Expanding. Hold on, I think they're more and more. Yeah, hold on a minute. Can you hear me? Oh, hold on a minute. Direction. All right. Is that was that it, Brian? Was that the so what this guy is doing? I've showed this before. Okay, that was but four minutes. Apparently... Okay, we're good. All right. So we've had Bob himself join. Hey, what's up, Bob? Can you guys hear me? Uh, yeah, you're a little low, but uh, not too bad. All right, I'll keep, check the volume up uh, here. Hang on just a second, and I'll get back to you and explain to you why Brian is wrong. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Um, anything to say about that, Brian, while we're waiting for Bob to get back on? Brian? Oh. I would say that the heating balloon still has got some buoyancy in, in that the vacuum is not completely done and that's why it still stood up and it's okay. not lying on the ground okay is this a little better my volume yeah perfect thanks bob 
Much better. Okay, cool. All right, here's the problem with Brian's demonstration. First of all, he's showing helium balloons, helium filled balloons inside of a gas chamber. And so what's happening is because of the fact that he's removing the external air component, the helium, you know, being more buoyant is, is expanding inside of the balloon because it's fighting to get outside because there is no pressure outside. But what I said was that the gas itself would settle to the bottom. So here's what's gonna happen. So when those when those balloons burst, and you can't see this, and by the way, I made a I made a mistake. It is actually hydrogen that is the light lightest gas, not helium. Irrelevant though, it's you know, whatever. So when those balloons burst, the hydrogen or a helium, excuse me basically got rocket shipped all over the inside of that chamber, right? And they're bouncing around like a mofo big time. And they're going to do that for quite some time because they do, there is this elastic elasticity to, um, uh, you know, the molecules themselves. But yeah, after a while, just... con no, you can't. After a while, conservation of energy is going to take place and that those gas molecules are going to slow down. Now, in order for the gas molecules to, to rise, they have to be buoyant in contrast to something else. Well, there is nothing else inside of that vacuum chamber. Therefore, gravity or the downward acceleration is going to take its toll on them and they are going to sit on the bottom. How do I prove that? Well, look at Earth, look at Earth, right? Why do we have a gas gradient gradient on the Earth? The reason is, is because we have all these different gases and, um, and the, the downward acceleration is pulling them down. Therefore, at sea level, you have 14.7 PSI. In some places that are below sea level, it actually goes up to about 18 or 19 PSI. When you get up to 50,000 feet, it goes down considerably lower than that. There is a gradient. You to watch. Because the <laughs> downward acceleration is pulling down on it. And that's exactly what is happening to that helium. And it, it, I guarantee you that after that helium exhausts and, and succumbs to entropy, essentially, those gas molecules are going to sit on the bottom of that gas chamber. And there are ways to prove that as well. So there's well, how you're wrong, Brian. Sorry, so buddy. So you're, you're, you're claiming yeah, Paul, that eventually Paul, the helium, can I just, the helium can I just get in there for a please? Hold on, guys. He just addressed Brian. Uh, if Brian's there, let's let's let Brian. Respond. Yeah, yeah. If I if I could respond, okay. If you, if we kept watching the video, which we don't have to, I'll just give a quick explanation. I show the balloons and liquid nitrogen and how they completely deflate. Uh, I don't think there's a gradient up up into a complete void up there. But um, no, I think um, that that the only way that the uh, the helium is going to pull at the bottom is if the if the temperature around it gets real cold and it and it liquefies you know or something to that factor uh, gas in a vacuum will always expand and gas will expand in all directions in in any chamber but especially in a vacuum and it it'll and expand right. without a change without a change with the only thing that'll change is entropy there's no energy it'll always expand and uh there's no energy loss Brian, gain to do, anything. Do you understand that I'm agreeing with you? I'm agreeing with you, but you cannot have perpetual motion of the gas molecules. Where are they getting the energy to do that? Eventually, they're going to run out of that kinetic energy and they're going to settle on the bottom. But when How you long? initially discharge into that vacuum chamber, you bet they're flying around like a mofo everywhere. But well, like isn't anything that what else, there is. is? I'm sorry. Is Say what? That, that's slowing down. The condensation isn't that the gas is slowing down and sort of becoming water, you know, losing a bit of their. Yeah, that, that's what, that's what I was talking liquids. about. Well, not that's the, what I was talking about. That has to do with temperature. Are you talking about from the liquid nitrogen? No, the liquid nitrogen is. No, 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 no. All right, so we yeah, what, I wasn't quite done, there. man. I wasn't quite done with what I was saying, All but right, uh, yeah. So there's no change. There's no change in a. Uh, and energy or anything when when uh gas moves into a, a low pressure or the gas uh swapped around is there's there's no energy change it just is a change in entropy and in a vacuum um i, I got a question when when would it uh when when would the see that's the in my opinion that's the parlor trick is is uh in the ball model they want to have their uh gas bouncing around and they want to have it go to the bottom to uh, they want it to fall down but uh and when if my question would be when would the helium gas or any other gas 
fall down in a vacuum good, chamber? Good question. When can we as soon as it gets into an, a condition of entropy, as soon as it, it can, look, I don't know the exact time figure of how long they're going to bounce around. But guys, you do understand that that things cannot maintain motion perpetually, right? Perpetual motion wow. is not a reality, all right? So eventually those molecules are going to slow down and slow down and they're gonna stop bouncing around. And when they do, they are going to settle on the bottom. Why on the bottom? Due to entropy, Bob. Entropy no, is what? No, they're going oh, to settle on the bottom move. because they have nothing to be buoyant upon. You have to have, now look, if there was air in there, then they would be, they would settle on top of that air, on top of that you gradient. Can't Bob, you uh, you're, 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 I'm you're roboting, Jeremy. Jeremy, you're roboting. That, that, Jeremy, that you're not roboting gonna happen at room temperature. I agree with Brian. It's, if it's at room temperature, then they're always going to get energy from the room because of the high temperature and they're always going to bounce around. Well, this seems like it would Is be a pretty so? easy well, thing to uh, prove or disprove by experiment, Bob. Uh, Bob, do you uh, know of any Right, and I'll experiment? tell you how to do it. You don't even have to do an experiment. Just go down to your local gas store, buy a canister of helium, and, and before you walk out the door with it, shake it a little bit you know it's you know what's going to happen you're going to you're going to find that the helium has condensed and turned to a liquid at the bottom of that canister well why did it do that because it can't why is the spout the not at the bottom oh, no, brian please stop interrupting let's not start the interrupting guys please finish bob all right well that's that's pretty much why is the spout not at the bottom well i'll tell you what if you go and look at good times for all's videos he actually put a gas pressure gauge at the top and at the bottom of one of these gas canisters. And guess what? The gas pressure was higher at the bottom of the canister. Why? Because you have a downward acceleration that is adding no. to the force that's creating yeah. that pressure. That was because he made a temp. He had a temperature change uh, in, in, inside the canister. Can you guys hear me? He didn't do any temperature or... change. He had no temperature change. Can you guys change. hear me? Yeah, yeah we silent, zero. Hold on. good times for yeah. when he had the bottom. I, I wanna, hold on, Silent Zero. Go ahead, Jeremy. Sure. Good times for all video when he had that the heat on the top and the cold on the bottom or, or whatever. Oh oh yeah, that was the second part of it. He did another one where he, he put the cold on the bottom. Yeah, so absolutely that he could cause a a condensation also showing that but otherwise it will do it naturally as he made well a temperature he made a, a temp he made a gradient because of the temperature change that's nothing to do with gravity on one video wrong. yes there are there's another one that demonstrates it all by itself okay so maybe you haven't seen that video jeremy but uh yeah yeah, yeah the, the, look the guys look just use your common sense just use your common sense why why would something remain in perpetual motion or, or or better yet how does it remain in perpetual motion and if gases always did remain in perpetual motion and were pressing up all the time against the top of the container just as much as they were on the bottom of the container then how do we have a pressure gradient here on plain earth which is a flat earth model and mind right. you i'm also postulating yeah. that we have a firmament over the top of us yeah. So I got one more the, thing to say. Oh, plane, sorry. I got one more thing to say, Jeremy. One more thing. It's all y'all's, buddy. I mean, these are my closing statements. Uh, if he could demonstrate that, that'd be cool. But um, yeah, he just said how there could be a gradient, uh, the temperature. But my final thing is, is air. Okay, it, it it ain't just helium. You need all gases to pull at the bottom. Okay, and air will never pull at the bottom without temperature changes and all that stuff it'll always stay pressurized until it slowly leaks out due to entropy or uh or you have temperature variations oh if you could well, if you could demonstrate that i would i would be all i'd be all for seeing it bro. You and i'd be that, i'd be convinced you if you can't i'm that. almost done bob almost done buddy that's bullshit. almost done buddy okay let me finish i wanted to say if you could show me a demonstration of of it that uh i i would uh have a way more open mind uh toward it if you could show me gas settling at the bottom of uh of a, yeah. you know, in you know, any you know, chamber. The problem is, call, I'm not, right? I'm not well, denying it. I'm just asking you for a demonstration. Cocksure, you are cocksure that this is the way that this, this behaves. You're not even thinking it through. Look, the, look at the evidence. Yeah, but if, if you show me otherwise, I'll change my mind, Bob. Uh, yeah, let's see. The all right, you know what? I'm not really interested in convincing you. Um, if you don't understand it, then I don't know what to say. Hold on, Bob. I, I'm not quite sure that's, that's fair, but that's a fair position, Bob, because we are, 
uh, interested in experimental evidence, and a, a lot well, of us are, 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 you know, sh show me the proof. Uh, your logic makes sense to me, and I'm trying to follow and make my mind up too. But I am also interested right. in seeing so the why experimental you're evidence. Why do the experiment and prove me wrong? Why do I have to prove myself right? You're making a positive He's claim, Bob. That's not how science so is he. Works, Bob. Yeah, I know. So I'm not convinced to his position either, though. And his, his, his is counterintuitive it, to logic. Yeah, Brandon, can, can I just say, say something now? Yeah, guys, good. Can I say something? Uh, Silent Zero, go ahead. You've been waiting. Yeah. Even if that's the case that the air or the helium sits in the in the bottom of the chamber, that's because that's the next denser thing that is available for the for the helium to sit on. If you insert another material that is denser, it's gonna pull it's gonna take the helium up. It's, it's absolutely it's, right. You're proving it's actually you're, right. you're proving Yeah, you're actually proving then how density is the the thing that moves things up and down, Bob? I don't know if you realize. Oh, you have this. got to be kidding me! So you're saying, let me get this mm, straight. No. You're saying mm, that mm. it's sitting on the bottom because it's harder, it's more dense. Well, yeah, granted, it's it a is denser dense, thing, but it's also yeah. part of the container. You've got to be kidding well, me! There is no atmosphere in there, so there is no yeah. other molecules, so to speak, of to sit on, especially the gas variety. Now, if we put water in there, mm -hmm. you know what? That helium and hydrogen would sit on how, top of the water. If we put carbon monoxide about, in there, it would sit on top of that. How about in the, how about liquid mercury? That's going to bring even iron to the top. Well, great. Then we are dealing with the yeah. buoyancy and density argument. But what you don't understand is in order for relative density to displace objects, there has to be a somewhat of a force that causes the displacement. And that force well, is it, brought about by a reaction to the downward acceleration that is constant on all things. Why does there have no, to be if some you're force, removing the density, uh, Bob. if you remove the density of the container, that pretty much you're removing your like the what we're trying to prove, right? The density is what moves things up and down. I don't even know what you're saying. What are you trying to say? I don't even know what you're saying. He's saying as soon as you make a vacuum and change the the density of the medium, you you're proving relative density. Thank you. Exactly. Hold on. Let me Why? Because let me ask a question. Inside of a container? Are you guys smoking crack? Let me ask no. a question. No. Hold on. Let me ask a question, Bobby. You said something. You said uh, there has to be a downward acceleration. Isn't that what you said? Why? Yes, and, and I cite that because of the example that I've given several times before. Let's go back to the density tower in the zero G plane. All right. Okay. What happened when, when they were at normal one G the density tower organized, he could shake it up and it would organize and it would it line up perfectly with all the densities from bottom to top, from most dense to least dense. Correct. Then they went to a zero G condition, right? And while in a zero G condition, which essentially is negating this downward acceleration, he shook it up. Guess what happened? Well, nothing would order. It wouldn't order anymore. Everything was just a jumbled mess. Then the pilot no. pushed it over. Ah, Hold don't on. say I'll no. Respond. Go ahead, happened. finish, Bob. Then the pilot pushed the nose over a little bit more and actually caused an upward acceleration. Now, what happened? So he shakes it up. Then the density tower then reorganized with the with the heaviest gas or heaviest stuff at the top. It organized in the opposite direction. That is why I'm saying that you have to have a small bias there in order to displace and give uh, buoyancy and relative density the opportunity to reorganize themselves. You can't do it without a force, guys. All right. You cannot just, things just don't do things just because. Yeah, there no, has to be a force. No, I'm going to respond. Okay. So um, when a density tower is in the vomit comet, and 